The superpower that every citizen has is the ability to control where they spend their time, money, and attention. By focusing these on supporting local businesses, you are having a profound impact on your friends, your family, and your local community. So if you want to change the world, you can start with buying local. Hello, everyone. Uh, Mike Nelson here with Buying Local. We're actually doing a simulcast for both Glens Falls and Saratoga today. I am with Scott Peterson from Durazio Peterson Law Firm in Saratoga. And, and Scott, now you guys do a few different things, and you cover a kind of a territory, Warren, Washington, Saratoga counties, because that's kind of where you live, but... It, and it, it kind of goes out from there too. So maybe, you know, let's just take a minute, tell, you know, tell everyone, you know, who you are and what you guys do over there. All right. Well, first, thanks for having us on or having yeah. me on. Um, so we are kind of a, I, I don't like to use the word boutique, but a small firm that handles primarily uh, employment discrimination and serious personal injury cases for kind of a small number of clients. Okay. Um, and we handle those cases like you said, locally in our neighborhood, uh, we're based in Saratoga Springs, Saratoga, Washington, Warren counties, upstate New York. Uh, and our practice has kind of taken us throughout the state and actually into Vermont over the last couple of years. Um, we, we try to focus on helping a very small number of people with pretty serious problems. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, because of that, we have intentionally kept kind of a small practice. Um, and we are, you know, we're pretty selective about the cases and clients that we take on, but we give a very personal level of attention to our a personalized level of attention to our clients. So when you say employment discrimination, right, what, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think most of the time we're telling people what it doesn't mean, okay. actually, um, because we, we feel the very high volume of calls of people who have had something go wrong in the workplace uh, and they call us. Um, New York is a very employer-friendly state, mm-hmm. um, so many of the things that go on in the workplace that people, you know, that happen to people aren't illegal. They might not be nice, they might not be appropriate, uh, but that doesn't make them illegal. So the kinds of cases that we handle are fairly severe instances of things like really serious sexual harassment, um, where someone has been going through something for typically a long period of time. They've made complaints to someone running up the ladder. It continues to go on and they're either forced out or they have to quit or they're fired. Um, typically it's someone who's working in a fairly high level position. Mm -hmm. Um, the kind of things that people often say to me, ah, this stuff doesn't really happen anymore. Right. And I'm like, people are people. I know that's actually what it literally what I was thinking. I was like, I can't even believe that that still goes on in today's world. Like, yeah. Uh, and the best example, you know, the Me Too, all the stories that came out of Me Too really exposed a lot of what we see behind the scenes to yeah. kind of the, the masses. Uh, and people were shocked when they saw people like, you know, in positions of power, Matt, Matt Lauer, Harvey Weinstein, those kinds of people. And they're like, how does this stuff go on? I can't believe it. Yeah. And it, like I said, I, I think there's a, there's an element of human nature to it that, you know, we've, the laws have become more strict. Uh, the education around these issues has become significantly greater over the years, but to some degree, people still do things against their own self-interest, uh, yeah. like, you know, knowing that they're wrong and th- this kind of stuff still happens and we see it all the time. Um, so that's, you know, that's one example of the kinds of employment th- discrimination or sexual harassment cases. We also do a lot of work with, um, people who have disabilities. Um, they find themselves asking for or needing a leave for mm-hmm. one reason or another, uh, they come back, their job is gone or they're fired or something along those lines in retaliation. Uh, these days, I'd say the primary kind of cases that we work on are related to disabilities, medical conditions, medical leave, and then you get the sexual harassment. Uh, and then we do a fair bit of work for people who go out on military leave, mm-hmm. uh, come back and find themselves frozen or without a job. Uh, so much of it is not the kind of splashy headline stuff that you see on television. Right, right. Some of the sexual harassment stuff does really make your eyes, you know, makes your head want to explode. Yeah. The fact that it goes on, but some of it's much more subtle. Um, and it's, it's, you know, helping people who have worked hard. Uh, most of them are pretty highly educated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and most people who call us, who we ultimately take out as clients or many of them are, they've never worked with a lawyer before. They've never had, they, they never thought they'd be in this kind of a situation. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of our, 
That's our employment side of the practice. And so there's the employment side, and then there's the personal injury side. Correct. So tell us a little bit about that. Because I think everybody knows or thinks they know, but they don't actually know. So tell us about the personal injury stuff. So um, I, I kind of equate what we do in the personal injury space to um, if you think about you want to go out to eat at a restaurant, mm-hmm. right? Um, a couple weekends ago on Friday night, I went with my kids. We went to Chipotle. Uh, and Saturday night, my wife and I went to, I was just telling you, the pharmacy up in yeah. West Falls. Um, we, they were both meals. <laughs> we ate at both of them, but they yep. were very different experiences, right? Yeah. Uh, and so when we when we kind of set out to open our firm, we thought about what kind of experience do we want to give the clients who work with us. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's the Chipotle experience exists. It's out there. I don't fault, you know, any any anybody for doing what they do. But there are there are firms that handle lots of volume, lots of clients, lots of people come through the doors. You might see them all, of, you know, on television or all yeah. over the place. We decided we wanted to be more of an experience like when I went to pharmacy, I sat at the chef's counter. I talked to the chef. There were six or eight people there. Uh, and I got a very personalized level of experience. And so when we decided that this is the kind of practice we were going to do, you know, 12 years ago, mm-hmm. we decided that we wanted to give that personalized level of experience. So the clients who come to us, you know, whether it's they've been in a car accident or they've had a, you know, a misdiagnosis or a really bad error in a facility or a healthcare facility mm-hmm. or a nursing home, um, they typically are the kind of people who will do a lot of research, uh, who will talk to friends and, you know, people that they trust in their lives. Um, and they're not going to kind of call the first person that they see. They, they're, they're typically hesitant to think about making a claim for something wrong that happened to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we always, yeah, I kind of always explain people the process. You know, most people who get hurt, they they may initially think about, is there anything I can do about it? Then they kind of work on their treatment, and then they think about, is this the kind of thing I want to do, right? right? And so the conversations that we have often revolve around, well, there are many ways to approach something like this. Uh, there's many ways to try to help yourself and your family without, you know, getting yourself in the paper and, and making flashy headlines. And so a lot of people come to us, they, they want to do things discreetly. They want to do things professionally. Mm-hmm. Many of them are professionals themselves. Um, and so they, you know, they want that sort of highly personalized level of kind of care and attention. Uh, and so that's kind of what we give them. That's a great analogy, by the way, <laughs> with pharmacy and Chipotle. Look, they're both good. They're both great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that's a completely different product, completely different level of service. Yeah. And shout out to, uh, those guys at pharmacy. They do a great oh, job. Yeah. The food's amazing. Amazing. The whole experience is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and we're in Saratoga and there's lots of great restaurants, but that's up there with you know, any of the best ones up there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Paul Smith, Renovo Real Estate. With over three decades of experience in construction, Paul brings a unique perspective to the real estate industry. His construction background helps his clients throughout the buying and selling process. Buyers are able to leverage his knowledge to identify potential issues that could be costly down the road or even get a better price on their new home. If you are buying or selling real estate, think of Paul Smith with Renovo Real Estate. On the, on the personal injury side, I mean, what I really hear you saying is that someone's gone, well, and really on both sides of your business, right? Someone's gone through something that potentially is horrific, right? Whether it's a sexual harassment, you know, discriminatory thing at work, uh, you know, or if it's a, a slip and fall or some, some sort of accident or whatever it is. Um, and then you guys are really there to kind of help them through the process to make sure that they, and I'm trying to remember how you, the last time we spoke, you phrased it in a specific way that really made me, I had never thought about it that way. And now I'm trying to remember what, how you phrased it, but something along the lines of, oh my God, I'm trying to blank on this. Well, so we, um, we, we kind of have a philosophy of, you know, and it's on our website of educate, yeah. empower, and guide. And our, our, our whole approach to the process is, you know, we want, we want people who are going through these, this, these situations to understand, you know, what this world looks like because it's so foreign to them. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's, it's, it's extremely confusing and it's extremely intimidating. And so our, our sort of mindset and approach is we want, we want you to be as educated and as comfortable as you need to be to understand how this, how this works and what, what you want to achieve mm-hmm. and how to get there. Uh, as opposed to, you know, 
somebody walking in my office and me banging on the table and flipping the table over and saying, I'm calling the Times Union and I'm calling this and we're doing that. And maybe that's not exactly like in their best interest. Mm-hmm. You know, um, not everybody wants that, uh, nor do they even know that that's something that's available to them. Yeah. And I mean, I'd imagine that some of these people are a bit reticent to go through this process, right? This, I can't imagine it's an easy process. And I think, I mean, I think if I was about to go through this process, I'd be like, you know, I don't want people to think I'm trying to get something for nothing or I'm trying to, you know, work the system or any of that stuff. Right. And so like, what do you tell those people in those situations? That's a great question. Um, you know, we're sort of harmed by the headlines around Mm -hmm. like, you know, the hot coffee case or, you know, cases that, you know, are, are, are a complete joke. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying the hot coffee one was, that was actually, you know, in the, in our community, that's actually something that it was so hot that McDonald's, I think, changed the standards afterwards. Yeah. So. I mean, I've burned myself on hot <laughs> yeah, coffee so, before. Uh, but, but, you know, so when we, when we talk to them about it, we, we, we try to explain it to them in a way that, you know, your, your, what happened to you is, is very personal to you. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it has nothing to do with what you see everywhere else, uh, nor does it have to be something that kind of going back to what I said before that makes the front page of, you know, mm-hmm. the news for being, uh, you know, something that offends people or gets them upset. Um, the long and the short of it is that, you know, let's use an example of uh, a man or a woman who's in their 40s, has kids and is a professional and they, you know, they maybe they go into the hospital and they get prescribed the wrong medication or they have surgery on the wrong body, you know, something that we see that, yeah. you know, gets kind of swept under the rug typically. And now they can't work. Right. And now they're, you know, their, their family's losing out and they, they they can't pay their medical bills and their kids college tuition money is gone. And so for them, it quickly becomes less about worrying about what, what that, you know, that, uh, that perception is and more about how am I going to get through this? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so our, our kind of job and goal is to, to try to show them that, look, this is about one of the most serious things that can happen to your family in your life. And there's, there's a way through this, Mm -hmm. uh, without you having to worry about what other people are thinking. Um, and you know, it's, it's sort of the situation where, you know, most of the people who call us say, I'm not the kind of person who sues. That's like the first thing that we right. hear, right? Uh, and I always say, you know, everybody says that until they find themselves in that position. It's yeah. very easy to sort of take shots at the guys in the billboards and, you know, the people with the silly commercials. I get it, you know, and, but until something like that happens to you, yeah. you know, and when it does, it becomes a lot more serious uh, and a lot more, more personal. Right? Yeah. And so that's the conversation that we have. It's sort of explaining to them that it's okay to be doing this. Right. And it's it's okay to be thinking about this. And you thinking about this does not make you someone who belongs on a, you know, a cheesy ad or, Mm -hmm. you know, a funny, a funny video or, you know, getting talked about on the news. That's a very different scenario. Uh, So that's the kind of conversations we like to have. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to, you know, because in some situations where there is neglect or. I don't want to say malice, but there, there was uh, something that happened because someone wasn't doing what they're, you know, like I think of the, he operated on the wrong body part or whatever, you know, so there, there's obviously a problem there. And that person suing the organization that did that, they're potentially preventing that from ever happening again. And I, I like, I don't think that's something, and I only think that way because of one of our previous conversations, I, I wouldn't have thought that way. Otherwise I'd be in the mode of, you know, we just, we live in such a litigious society and, you know, everybody wants to sue for everything. And a lot of lawsuits are, you know, in my humble opinion, and I'm not a lawyer, uh, you know, what a lot of them are just silly, you know, and a lot of things that are going on and uh, legally are silly. And it's like, oh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be a part of that system. But at the same time, if something horrific like that happened and it had a huge negative impact on my life and my kid's life, and potentially could happen to other people unless I step forward. Uh, you know, I, I definitely, I mean, it's, you know, it needs to be done. Well, so I've, yeah. And I've, I've sort of two responses to that. Yeah. Uh, the first is that what the public doesn't necessarily see and, and know is that the standard is actually, it, it's fairly difficult to succeed in, in, a in lawsuit. one of these lawsuits. Yeah. yeah. In particular in involving the medical profession, but just in general, you know, the, the, the standards are high. Uh, judges dismiss cases all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and just because you read something in the headlines doesn't necessarily mean that it's accurate, right? So I always, I'm always talking to 
you know, on our podcast and our blogs and about what you see on television, what you see in the news is probably not accurate relative mm-hmm. to what actually happens. You might see, oh, there was a $50 million jury verdict. What it doesn't tell you is, well, there's actually only, you know, $1 million of insurance coverage and that claim settled for $1 million, not 50 Or right. it got reversed on appeal or it got reduced. Like th- that stuff you don't see. So the first part of it is it's actually pretty difficult to succeed. Um, yeah. And our standards are, you know, pretty high when we select cases. We want to make sure that it's a, there was something really bad did happen. Mm-hmm. We could actually prove it. Um, and the second to your point is, and I, I didn't see this as much or I didn't appreciate this as much until I got really into this world, but it actually does affect change. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's for better or worse in a capitalist world or society, you know, monies or companies and businesses, they need to make money, right? Mm-hmm. And they will do things that will typically help them generate profits. Um, and, I think the system that is designed in our world, the, the litigation system, does allow you to force change where it might not otherwise occur, and right. that's through somebody's wallet, right? Um, I've had m- multiple cases over the, over the years where pretty egregious things have happened, whether they were really bad sexual harassment uh, or egregious errors in, in, in hospitals or healthcare facilities, uh, where I know that after the case, mm-hmm. policies changed, right? Uh, people were fired, people who should have been gone a long time ago in, in cases of sexual harassment. Or, you know, we've had cases where there were no constraints around the behavior of people in the workplace. People were just, try, you know, women were just trying to go to work and do their job. And because there were no constraints, these, these environments were, were created that were absolutely ridiculous. If you had a daughter or a wife, you would, you would never let would them not work want in a place them there, like yeah. That. Um, and, and we know that when we filed lawsuits and took depositions and asked really uncomfortable questions, after that, those, those things were gone. And, yeah. and I'm not saying they were eliminated, but they were better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in the, in the setting of the, the healthcare system, you know, we've had cases where there was a really egregious misdiagnosis and someone, you know, maybe went on to, divide, to, to uh, have a form of cancer that progressed really bad or, or something along those lines that we filed lawsuits and took those depositions and you can guarantee that 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 provider or that person didn't make that mistake again. Right. Um, and so, you know, the system is designed this way. It's to, a positive outcome, at least. It is. Even and from a negative circumstance. It is. It's the best you can do because you can't get someone, you know, you can't unring the bell. Right. Um, and so a bit of it's, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking. But yeah. that's the way the system's designed. You know, there are, this is why people and companies have insurance. Um, and so, you know, we're, the system is hopefully set up in a way that it does help kind of move the ball forward and kind of lead us towards some measure of progress as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. That's a, at least the idealistic way that we try to look at it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fine too. Cause I remember from our discussion, well, we, you know what we should talk about right now is your podcast, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, so you and well, well, we have we haven't even talked about the fact that your wife is your partner in your law firm. Yeah, and you and I'm sorry, I can't remember your wife's name. Javana. Javana. You two have a podcast. We do called Talk Lex, which Lex is the Latin for law. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Brilliant. So tell us about the podcast. Yeah. So that was my wife always jokes that. Um, Podcasting was like perfect for my personality because yeah. I like to talk. <laughs> um, and so, same. Giovanna handles, uh, she handles most of our, or much of our employment discrimination practice. And, mm-hmm. and so, uh, we had this idea to try to make a podcast that would bring some common sense discussion to legal issues in the news and, you know, legal issues that people kind of face every day. That, yeah. that you know, like I said, it's a very confusing world. Um, and if you, you know, when you see how the, how, how legislature works and how mm-hmm. the government works, they're the ones writing the laws. So you kind of understand why much of this is confusing. Why is, yeah, exactly. Uh, but also, you know, the, the, the reporting on a lot of it is, is, is not always accurate, right? Mm-hmm. The stories you read, like I said, aren't always, um, an accurate depiction of what's happening. Um, and we thought maybe people would be interested in hearing about that and hearing, you know, what actually is going on here. Yeah. Uh, and you know, when you read this, what does that actually mean? And so we try to talk about kind of legal issues in the news, kind of break them down for in, in a common sense way, mm-hmm. and also bring on some guests in other areas of law. So we have had adoption attorneys and matrimonial attorneys and estate planning attorneys and people who can kind of break down for, for the average person 
what is this actually, what's this world actually look like? Right. Um, you know, hopefully people won't necessarily have to get involved in these kinds of things, but the reality is that most people eventually need a lawyer for one of those things. So for it's, something. Yeah. It's a good idea to kind of have an idea of how the system works. I think, I think transparency and education is, is really critical and important. Uh, and I think, um, the more people know, the better. I don't mm-hmm. think it's, I don't think it benefits us as lawyers to hide what we do or to make it seem like it's this, you know, facade of, of, you know, secrecy. I think, yeah. you know, explain to people, tell them how it works. Tell them what the system looks like. A very complicated system. <laughs> it <laughs> really is. Complicated. It's so complicated. Yeah. Uh, well, our legal system in general is just so complicated. It's, it's crazy. Bob Fitch, your local state farm insurance agent with a mission of helping people manage the risks of everyday life, recover from the unexpected, and realize their dreams. Whatever your needs may be, State Farm has got you covered, and Bob Fitch is your man. Now, you guys had, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the episodes. Did you do the um, Johnny Depp trial? We did. That yeah, was our, did. That's our most listened to episode. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting stuff. I mean, how much viewership that that, uh, that case in general got. It is. You know, it's it's funny what the public latches on to, mm-hmm. right? I say this as someone whose name is Scott Peterson, who's been getting... <laughs> Listen, I forgot that. all about that. Well, and I then appreciate I, you not bringing it up. I, and then one of the guys brought it up before the show. I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about that. I mean, I'm not kidding you. At least three times a week, somebody makes a comment about really? it. Really? Yeah. And it's I, it started when I was in law school. Um, the, the, the case happened when I was yeah. in law school. And that's almost 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, and... When I started dating Giovanna, I was, I had just graduated law school and, and she's got two brothers who, you know, we're all the kind of guys who like to get on each other. Yeah, bust so chaps. Yeah. They've, they've been busting me on the name ever since. And she, very early on, she's like, you know, you got one chance to change your name. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't do it and I should have. Uh, so, oh man, you know, that's so. funny. That, yeah, they must have had a lot of fun with you, uh, yeah. you know, and their sister as well. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure you want to date a guy named Scott Peterson? Yeah. yeah. Um, but back to the, the, the Johnny Depp thing, it's people, uh, you know, they love celebrity as you guys know yeah. here in media. Um, and when, when there's a splashy, you know, trial, it, it, you, it airs all the dirty laundry. Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, that actually goes to kind of one of your questions before, which is when someone comes to us with, you know, let's say they've gotten, they're a local professional who's gotten in a really bad accident. You know, they may come to me and say, the last thing I want is this. I don't right. want to be, you know, in a courtroom testifying, you know, having somebody covering this trial. Um, and so that's always part of the consideration of, of yeah. you know, what the path forward is, um, is, is based upon those kinds of things. Now, most local cases aren't getting that kind of coverage, but they, you know, some local cases do mm-hmm. for, for one reason or another, grab a headline. Uh, and that's, so that's something we're always thinking about too. Did, uh, did Amber end up getting any, anything turned over? Did, did he still, cause I remember she was trying to appeal and yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure where that is currently. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought there might have been a settlement of the whole thing. I'll tell you, I've never laughed so hard watching trial footage as uh, when Johnny Depp was on the stand. Unfortunately, it, it was really funny. I know. I know. I, I hope the trials that you go to and sit through are th- equally funny. <laughs> so they're not, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really interesting mm-hmm. because the topics are serious, right? Mm-hmm. And you're dealing with lives and, and you know, often very you know, significant amount of damages. But at the same time, uh, you know, you're, you're, I love trying cases. You're, you're talking to a jury um, and you're, you're trying to explain this whole system to them in a window of, you know, a couple of days. Right. Right. Um, And you need to connect to them and you're trying to build that rapport. And so there's, you know, I'm a, I like to kind of tell jokes off the cuff and, 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 you know, connect to people. So there's, there's definitely that balance. Um, I will say I've had some trials where, I've had some fun with some witnesses, uh, and it's never risen to the Johnny Depp level, but it's been, you know, I've walked out and and really, really been happy about it. That's That's good. That's good. I also like to have fun and crack jokes, but unfortunately it doesn't always go the direction I want it to go in. So, uh, all you gotta do is listen to my podcast. You know what I mean? It happens at least once an episode, I think where I'm just like, Oh, yep. Yeah. That was, that was ill placed. Well, I have a podcast with my wife, so you can imagine when I, uh, when I say something stupid, she lets you know. She'll let me know. Yeah. yeah. Does she wait till you hit the stop button, or do, you know, does uh, 
usually there'll be a uh, the handle. Uh, she'll kind of raise a hand and say, "You can't say that." <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll just keep recording and on. We'll edit, we'll it, edit out it out later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I. Uh, it's funny too. You say like we at, almost once an episode because we have Mac, our podcast producer. He's in the other room and. I, I'll talk to Mac on these podcasts where I'll be like, uh, Mac, if you could just do me a favor and go back and cut that out of there. Uh, that sounded really not okay or silly or still whatever it was, you know, it was a bomb joke or whatever. But yesterday we had a podcast and I put my foot in my mouth and had to have Mac uh, remove that section. Yeah. Well, nobody will ever hear it. So <sighs> Yeah. You know, I mean, hope not anyway. No, it wasn't that bad, but, uh, so workplace discrimination personal injury and anything else that you guys really get into? No, that's kind of it. Um, you know, we do some, some work for some small local businesses. Um, we, we have sort of a, um, loose policy of, you know, we don't, we don't typically go after small local businesses mm -hmm. in our cases, which is why we're, our practice kind of takes us all over the state. We, you know, we pick specific cases and, mm -hmm. you know, we, we will go, we will pursue them, but we, so I, we do some work for some small local businesses and, you know, litigation kind of mm -hmm. context. But when we when we opened our practice, we decided that we were going to do only a couple of things and try to do them well. Yeah. Uh, and try to really limit our our base. Right. We both worked for big firms and um, kind of thought about what we wanted our, our practice to look like. And it was not a, you know, anything that comes in the door we're going to do. It's let's let's work with people we like, people we can help. Mm -hmm. And let's work with a small enough number that, you know, Anyone can call us at any time, and we can tell them exactly what's happening and have a conversation with them, mm -hmm. one of our clients. Uh, so we've we've intentionally not grown into other areas. Um, you know, the options have been there, sure, um, but you know, we've we've consciously decided to keep it small and you know, a bit of a like a family kind of feeling to it. Mm -hmm. So and the work's interesting. So yeah. So okay, I'm good. Um, and you've been doing this 20 years, you said? Yeah, 19 years. Does it feel no. weird? Do we feel weird to say that? 19 years. Yeah, I do feel weird to say that. <laughs> um, something happened the other day, and I was reminded of, you know, how long it's been. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's time flies, you know. Yeah. With, no. with kids in the mix and, you know, busy life and busy practice. And the yeah. next, you know, 20 years has gone by. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's insane. So, um if, if people want to find you, they want to get a hold of you, how do they, where do they go? What are they, where you're on the, the interweb? We're on the interweb. Um, we are pretty active on social media. Um, we're kind of always posting up videos kind of back to our philosophy of, you know, telling people what it, you know, giving them information. Mm -hmm. So on Instagram at Dorazio Peterson, um, uh, Facebook Dorazio Peterson, I'm on TikTok now. My son was making fun of me yesterday. Very nice. Um, SMP law. I think it is. Um, and then our website, DrazuPeterson.com, and our podcast, Talk Lex. Yes. Uh, which you've yeah. nicely mentioned. Yeah. Um, and I know that we, we've got it up on all of our websites, Saratoga Today, uh, Saratoga Business Report, Lens Falls Today. Uh, are you, I, but I can't remember off the top of my head, are you on uh, Spotify, yeah. Apple Podcasts, Google, all, the, all the fun stuff? Yeah. All the We're things? In all, the, all the places. All the places. You, YouTube, we have a... Uh, YouTube's actually the best place to find us because all of our podcasts and videos are up there. Yeah. Um, and you know, my, my kids have a field day with it. Of course. They quick, do. quick YouTube story. My, we, we did a, um, I don't want to say commercial, but we did a video a few years ago with a company uh, out of state, a very sp kind of like flat, flashy ish lawyer video with some former clients and it came out good and we put it up on YouTube and, um, my, Son or my daughter was in their class, and they pulled up a video to watch for the class in the ad room. In the ad room, the class. That's amazing. And I think they were just like mortified. Yeah, of course they were. It's hilarious. Yeah, uh, begging the question of uh, I'm not quite sure that's our intended demographic, but you know, maybe some targeting could have been uh, adjusted a little bit there. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, well, listen, uh, appreciate you coming on, coming in, and. Uh, for being a community partner up in Glens Falls and, you know, all the things that you do. So, uh, 
Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, and thanks for everything you guys do. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening, and uh, you'll hear from us next week. Don't forget, if uh, you enjoyed the show, please send it to a friend, share it, social media, any of the places that uh, you put your content. We would love it if you would share ours. So thanks, everybody, and until next time. The superpower that every citizen has is the ability to control where they spend their time, money, and attention. By focusing these on supporting local businesses, you are having a profound impact on your friends, your family, and your local community. So if you want to change the world, you can start with buying local.